one sec. One sec. One sec. Hold on. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Yeah. Look at how freaking tiny these eyes are. They're so little. They're like smaller than marbles. They're for the little 10 inch fairy baby. They're so little. to paint some babies again. I have gotten the tiger lily kit all ready to go here, but I think I'm going to start out with, what should I start with? Maybe, yeah, how about the, uh, ethnic toddler that I'm painting. And I think with her... See, at some point, because I want to go a lot, like... Yeah, I want to go a lot darker with the doll. And from research I've been doing, I'm thinking to get the level of, like, to get to the skin tone that I want, I'm going to have to, um, do some mediums, like some, like some of the Genesis mediums on, like, washes on her that aren't for sealing, and I don't usually do that just because of how temperamental the Genesis mediums can be. But I think in order to get the look I want on the doll, I'm going to have to do that. Because it's kind of getting to a place where it's like, the color's not really building anymore. And from what I've researched, I'm getting, like, I'm finding that a lot of people, in their experience, when you're going really dark with colors... There's a point where it's going to stop building, and you're going to have to do a wash of a certain medium to get it to build more. Anyways, that explains things. Down I go! so it's probably going to smell lovely, as they tend to do when you bottle them up for a while. Not terrible. But maybe I just, like, burned all of my sense, sensey thingy majiggers in my nose when I was doing the rubbing alcohol swab on the kit earlier. Okay, I need a brush. I have a brush. Also, when it comes to... So, I'm not going to do the mediums quite yet. I'm going to, you know try a couple more layers and see if I'm seeing any difference before I try that. And I also definitely want to do the veins before I try putting any mediums on the doll, because how I do my veins, if there's a medium on the doll, they're not going to turn out right. Okay, well, I would 
was thinking that I'd do another like Q and A sort of thing. But I thought, you know, why not just do a normal one? Because usually I look for reborn related ones. I guess I'll just sort of do like a 20 questions thing this time. I mean, as you can imagine, there's only so many, you know, reborn related thingy-majigs. You know, the <laughs> thingy-majigs. A thingy-majig could be literally anything. Anyways. I got something pulled up here. This is deep. Maybe I don't want to do this one. <laughs> if you could change one thing that happened, what would it be? Like, what is it? Like, one thing that happened in your life? Jeez. Um. That's a deep question. I. Yikes. There's part of me that says, you know, if I could change one thing that happened in my life, it would be when I failed out of college. But at the same time, I'm not sure that that is a good answer because... I was sort of going into a, like, this horrible downward mental and physical spiral of unhealthiness, and I didn't realize until after I had failed out of college and they kicked me out that college was half the problem. So I mean, it would be lovely if I hadn't failed out and, you know, I was able to continue, and, but at the same time, like, I'm not sure that would have been healthy for me. And also, right after I got kicked out, there was, a, uh, you know, there was the whole COVID thing. And that was causing a lot of problems for the students, so it's like, I kind of dodged a bullet in that aspect. Yeah, I don't know, um... People certainly have it a lot worse than I've had it, but I've also had quite a few, you know, bad things happen in my life. I'm always, you know, an advocate of saying just because, you know, like, someone always has it worse in perspective, but that doesn't mean that your problems don't matter, that your problems haven't scarred you, and that, you know, you haven't had it bad. Um, yeah, anyways, but I don't know if I want to necessarily change the traumatic things that have happened to me because, like, they're part of who I am. You know, I think if I could change... Like, not necessarily, this isn't necessarily, like, one moment in life, but I think if I could change anything when I look back is how I handled being targeted and, frankly, you know, quite frankly, bullied by the teachers in my Catholic elementary school. If I could go back and change one thing, it would be how I reacted to that and how I handled that. You know, I wish I would have stood up for myself more or stood up for other students that were suffering from that as well. Or, you know, I wish I had came out to other adults outside the school and talked about it more. Because the more I look back at my experiences there, the more I realize that there was a lot of stuff happening there that shouldn't have been. And a lot of things, a lot of ways that they were treating me and other students that just weren't okay that I didn't realize when it was taking place. as a child in that position you don't really realize and then like even when you do realize something that is terrible
terribly wrong and you know that it shouldn't be happening, it's hard to go to another adult about it because, you know, these are the these are teachers, these are people that are supposed to nourish and protect you, and you don't, as the child suffering that, you don't feel like you'll be heard, or you feel like you'll be put off if you try to talk to another adult about it. And I wish that I had. Wow, this got deep. <laughs> this, this got deep real quick. That was not my intention. But I mean, as much as, you know, those years were painful for me, and as much as they did mess me up, and you know, still, I still struggle with some of the things that happened there, and it still left a mental scar, and still affects my self-esteem, it's, I don't think I'd want to change that part of my life necessarily, because in a way, it's almost like the way they treated me, not that it makes it okay, but the way they treated me made me who I am, and it gave me strength to realize that I don't deserve to be treated that way, which is kind of sadistic. I'm not saying that I am happy it happened, or that, you know, it should be repeated, but... I don't know, I don't, I don't think that we should, you know, obviously it's not possible to go back and change things in your life, but, you know, if Harry Potter has taught us anything, you don't want to mess with time. <laughs> yes, I am that nerd that references Harry Potter when it comes to a serious conversation. <laughs> okay, next question. Ideally, I would like to live somewhere that's warm all the time, but I also don't want to, like, I, I don't want to have to, like, you know, Canada's government isn't perfect or anything, but, you know, like, and people can question our healthcare system all you want, at least I know that I'll be able to you know, like, have a heart attack in the future and not have to, like, sell my house to pay for it. There's just some, you know, there's things about the government here that make me feel more safe than, you know, per se, the U.S. government or a lot of the warmer places. If I'm looking for a warmer place, a lot of warmer places are still developing countries, and I definitely don't want to go there. So as much as I hate the cold, I think I'll, I'll stick to Canada. Not to mention, like, realistically, I could never leave everybody, I, I could never, like, just pick up and leave everybody I know. But I, I, I would love to live someplace where we don't have to deal with the Arctic hell every year. Every year we tell Mother Nature we don't want this, and every year she does it anyways. <laughs> Snow, um, hold on. Hey, bunny. Does that answer your question? It won't go away. And that is why... I hate it when people who live in places like California go, Oh, I wish we had snow. I wish we had snow. No, you don't! 
You don't wish you had snow. Trust me, you don't wish you had snow. You don't. You just don't. Careful what you wish for. You might think you want it, but you don't. That's too deep. I'm not going there. <laughs> who would your I who would be your ideal partner? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have no idea how to answer that. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. a childhood teddy bear. Ta-da! <laughs> this is Cosmo. Named after a cat that we actually had before it ran away. He was given to me when I was a baby in the hospital. And ever since then, he's kind of been like, you know, that childhood stuffed animal that you have that's like a comfort symbol to you. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, 21 years old, and he's, he's, you know, a little battered up, but he's, he's loved. He's loved. We'll never get rid of him. sits on my bed, <laughs> which is now way up in the air because it's a loft bed. I'm under it right now, and that's why it took me so long to get him. <laughs> Had to climb the ladder first. Okay, um, favorite holiday. Either Halloween or Christmas. I absolutely love Halloween, but at the same time, you know, Christmas is a much bigger deal. I feel like I should say Halloween because it's it's an underappreciated and never you know, there's that person who's like, Halloween isn't actually a holiday. They can go step on a Lego. <laughs> I love that insult. Why don't you go step on a Lego? Anyone who's like, well, Halloween isn't actually a holiday can go step on a Lego. scary movies. Um, yeah. I do, you know, every once in a while I'll go on a little Netflix horror movie binge. But I, I am, you know, I don't like jump scares. But I am very much into horror. I am, I do have like a very, I have a taste for the dark and morbid. I mean, I was that, I was that girl who absolutely loved anything to do with vampires and gothic and everything, and I still very much am that girl, just, you know, there's a lot less TV that has to do with vampires and stuff as of late. 
so I've moved on to other things that are probably a little less dark and gothic. Well, I mean... So, I'm one of those... I'm one of those people who, like, you know, almost had a stubbornness, I guess, whenever, like, I usually, when I get really into a series, it's usually when it's already over, and for the past, um, so the show, uh, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is a very dark take on, um, the 80s, the, what's the 80s? Whenever the sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch came out, it's a very dark spoof off of that, not a sitcom whatsoever, and the darkness of that is very appealing to me, and it's been on for... It came out in 2018, and, you know, I've followed it since then, but it never really got me into obsession mode until I started watching the fourth season, which came out very recently, and I've really been enjoying it, and I'm re-watching it, and, you know, basically what it is is Sabrina is a teenager who is living in a cult of satanic witches, which is very dark, and I, I, I just, I love the gothic, dark vibe, <laughs> but, um, in classic me fashion, I'm only really getting into it after it has tragically been cancelled, no doubt, by complaints of people who think that we shouldn't be able to represent any other religion in media than Catholicism or Christianity, which is, don't even get me on to the discrimination of religion in white culture. <laughs> But I mean, you know, the show had the followers, the show had all the potential to be a longer running series, and it's going to be very hard to make me believe that it doesn't, the cancellation doesn't have at least slightly something to do with parents not liking the satanic background to it, which really, when you actually watch the show, it's quite rebellion against, I mean, a lot of the show's plot has to do with rebelling against the satanic cult that she's in, and also, it is not a very realistic representation, it's a very movie Hollywood take on a satanic cult. Really, people who are satanists, and I'm not, I need to, you know, do more research on other sects of satanity, but I have done a lot of research on Luciferianism and all of that Hollywood crap about, you know, sacrificing humans, sacrificing animals, they don't really do that, and, you know, it just, it makes me mad that, you know, Everybody praises inclusivity, and we've got, you know, all sorts of inclusivity of sex, gender, gender identification, you know, sexuality, all that, but when you take it to religion, suddenly we are very close-minded again, and that if someone is in a satanic religion, we automatically cast them as bad, terrible, evil people, which is entirely untrue. I'm not in a satanic religion, but coming from, you know, being raised Catholic and, you know, I feel, you know, in the same way that 
satanic religions are very misrepresented in media, as well is the Catholic religion very misrepresented in media. You don't really see much of the Catholic religion being ever represented in a bad light. You have to search very hard to find media representing the Catholic community in a bad light. And I don't think that, you know, it deserves to be cast in a bad light, but it also is not always all sunshines and rainbows and love and inclusivity, because it's the, it was, my experience was the exact opposite. And I know for some people, it isn't like that. And I don't, I'm not saying that Catholics are bad. I'm not saying that we should outcast this religion. I'm saying that the Catholic Christian churches have a lot of control over media and opinions in general and coming from being very abused by that religion I don't like seeing other religions being so cast out and set as unholy or evil meanwhile I was a child who was very much treated evilly quite frankly there was some very evil actions done to me by the Catholic Church. So, you know, kind of. I don't even know how we got into this conversation, but I'm not afraid to take it there, so. Yeah. You know, basically my point is it's time to start including all religions. If we're going there, I might as well. I might as well keep it there. There is a part of me that is actually quite tempted to start trying to change my mannerisms from, you know, I'll I'll say the, you know, like, when something happens, like, oh my god, or thank god, or whatever, and I, there's a part of me that really wants to start, you know, erasing that from my vocabulary, because it just appropriates the whole widespread clutch that, you know, the Christian, Catholic, and all those religions, you know, have on the masses of Canada and the U.S. and most places in general. I'm not saying that I want to start saying, like, oh, thanks, Satan, or anything, because I'm not in a satanic religion, but I want to stop, you know, appropriating the whole, I don't know, any, people who are right-minded will get what I'm saying, start, instead of saying, oh my god, saying, oh my goodness. And I really shouldn't be saying thank God, because that's not me at all, and I don't think we have anything to thank from God, or, you know, not really. I believe in something bigger than us, but I don't believe in God. You know, I don't believe in, with all this suffering we have, and I feel there's a lot of excuses made for why, if there was this divine being, that they would let us suffer this way. And it's a lot of malarkey, if you ask me, but, you know, now we're going into very much my personal opinion, but my point is, we should be allowed to have these personal opinions and not be looked at as, you know, not be cast out for them, and to be allowed to have all of these opinions and to be able to express them without being put down for them. And anyways, bringing this home to what the question was originally about, yes, I do like very dark movies, not necessarily horror, even though I do like horror movies, but really more my interests are in more dark, gothic, 
dark themed, scary themed, not as much, you know, classic jump scare horror. And, um, I do definitely believe that the overwhelmingly, the overwhelming influence that the church has on all media is definitely responsible for the canceling of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which is one of my new favorite shows, and probably because of that reason, but anyways, moving on. Do you like roller coasters? I do. Like, I do like them, but I don't, I'm not a person who would choose to go on a roller coaster if I didn't have friends with me. It's, it's something that I do with friends. It's a friend activity, and I never thought that I would like, I do have that adrenaline junkie in me, to a certain extent, but it's like, I'm one of those people who's like, you know, you're getting on the roller coaster, you're going up the incline, you're like, oh god, oh god, why did I do this, this was a terrible idea, this was a terrible idea, why did I do this, and then after I get off, I'm like, that was fun, let's do it again, but if I do it again, I'm going, oh my god, why did I do this, why did I do this, why did I do it, and it's just a repeating cycle. And it's, you know, definitely not something I do without my friends, and I never thought that I would end up, you know, tolerating roller coasters, but, you know, my friends in high school, we went to Canada's Wonderland, and, you know, the first time it was kind of like peer pressure thing, I didn't want to look like a wimp, but then I realized, you know, this isn't so bad. But anyone who is familiar with Canada's Wonderland, there are, there's like one roller coaster there. There are two rides that I really don't like. One is the tallest roller coaster they have in the park, which is called the Leviathan. And what I don't like about it is, you know, how tall and how steep the drop is. I don't like the way it makes me feel on the way down. That, you know, when your stomach really goes way up, and, like, the physical effect it has on me, I don't like it. So, you know, I'll try to avoid going on that one, but if everyone's waiting in the line for an hour, I'll do it. <laughs> and then, you know, I also don't like... I forget what the ride's name is called, but it's a drop ride, and the only thing to it is you go up, 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 and then all of a sudden you go down! And they don't tell you when you go down, you just suddenly go down! And you don't know when you're at the top, and I only went on it once, and I did not like it. <laughs> did not like it. Have you ever cried at a film? Oh my god. <laughs> yes. I don't usually cry at sad movies. It has to get really sad. It has to be, like, something to do with a child or an animal dying, like Marley and me. That'll get me every time. But I usually don't cry at sad movies unless it's something like a franchise, a show, a series that I'm really into, that will get me. Like, I, last year, I found the show Once Upon a Time. As I said, I always get into series after they're over. Absolutely fell in love with it. And there's a character named Robin, who, spoiler alert, ends up dying very suddenly in one of the later seasons. And it was just so sudden, and, you know, this character was in love with one of my favorite characters, and he kind of, you know, almost saved this character emotionally, mentally. And, you know, this is, you know, this is that person who was very misunderstood, never thought that they would be loved, and, you know, in comes Robin, and all of a sudden, she has someone who is madly in love with her, and she's madly in love with him, and all of a sudden, he just dies. And I was absolutely crushed. And, you know, months later, 
I went back and I'm one of those people who will fall in love with a series and just watch it over and over and over again. But that was, that part of the season I do not watch, and I couldn't bring myself to watch it afterwards. Until, you know, months later, I was re-watching the series with my grandmother, and we got to that part where Robin dies, and I cried just as hard as I did the first time. I was literally sobbing to the point that, like, it was ugly cry. And it was, like, to the point where my grandma, after that episode ends, she's like, Are you okay? Do you want to stop watching it? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm not fine, but I'm fine. <laughs> you know, like, it's... I can't really predict when, you know, something is going to affect me so hard, and for some reason that just did. Or, you know, since I'm someone who gets really, I'm that fangirl that gets obsessed, obsessed with series. And going back to Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix, I finished the series finale. And it's a recent show, so I'm going to give you fair warning if you haven't finished watching it. This is the ending, so you know, like, five... Four, three, two, one. Are you gone? Are you gone? Okay. You're. If not, you're gonna hear it. You know, probably because the show got canceled and they knew the show was getting canceled. I, you know, the way that many shows go when they are aware that their show is getting canceled after this season that they're working on, they kill off the main character. So they kill Sabrina quite brutally. And watching it, I was fine. But afterwards, going back on it and re-watching the episodes, all of a sudden I started to cry. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you're not even watching that episode. And, like, it's not real. Why are you crying? And, like, going back and watching the earlier seasons, and, you know, it was probably, you know, seeing this young girl with all this potential and, you know, making all these plans for the future, and then, you know, in the back of your mind, you know she's gonna die <laughs> less than a year later. But, you know, it's not real, but for some reason, you still cry, and a lot of us do it, so. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Buddy. What's up? Go exploring, hmm? You go exploring? What about you? What's up with you, hmm? <laughs> okay, well, anyways, that's just been, uh, some painting and a little more personal glimpse into my life. Um, yeah, anyways, that's all for now, frog fans. Be nice, to fair, and equal to everybody, despite, you know, everything. And, uh, we will see you next time. Say bye, lizard. Say bye, bunny. Bye.